Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the seventh edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaosium. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc., that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and return to Masks of Neurothetep in our Shanghai chapter. And as we always like to do at the top of the show, we'd like to thank you, the listener, and those of you who are supporting us via Patreon. We would love for the rest of you to join us, and that is at patreon.com slash the Old Ways Podcast, where you can help decide the fate of these characters. And so we're going to begin with introductions to my right. This is Tiffany, and I play Maeve O'Shea. All right. And to Miss O'Shea's right. This is Morgan. I play Lillian Lane, and we're at the hotel. That's right. You're not on a boat anymore. Not so on a boat. Think, I can't You have to think about that. something else <laughs> at the end of the table. This is Jake. I'll be playing Jack Doyle, and uh, we're not even in town for 24 hours, and we already got several good leads. Yep. That's very, very true. Uh, to Mr. Doyle's right. Uh, this is Lonnie. I'm playing Robert Drummond, and uh, I helped a man retrieve his hat. It was glorious. You know, you uh, you certainly, certainly did, um, we'll just say, change the trajectory of what could have been last night, yes? Uh, to Mr. Drummond's right. This is James. I'll be playing Dr. Sigmund Tartenbach. And uh, so far, Shanghai has... Well, I mean, it's been a fun time. I've tried all sorts of little things. <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, definitely spreading your horizons here already. And uh, last, but certainly not least. Uh, this is Alex playing saint Baron, who uh, finds it important at this point to remain April fresh. Mm, indeed, you do. And so we'll raise the curtain on a day in Shanghai. One like any other. So the thing that's important as you begin to rouse from your sleep is that with a hotel as close to the docks as you are, all of your mornings start very early, not even by your own hand. The bustling outside, the ship traffic, it is like being at ground zero of thousands of people suddenly coming to work. And whether it's wagons or carts that wheel in and wheel out stock and supply boats are docking you're hearing the horns you're hearing voices of men and women and workers yelling in Cantonese for the next shipment or for the next product and the worst part for you Mr. Doyle is that now that you can understand Cantonese (laughs) you now begin to your brain begins to think back to the lessons that your professor gave you and you begin to pick out words and, and that keeps your brain firing. So it's harder for you to sit in that lucid, you know, state. You sort of come conscious a little quicker. So I start my day with a drink. You start your day with a drink. It, uh, it helps get you going. Really. It's something you've, uh, maybe come to rely on a little bit, but it's, uh, it's something you know. It's uh, it's become an important friend, do you think? Sam, with your um, evening wee hours spent cleaning and preparing, you are at least assured that to look uh, the part. Yeah, I would have uh, definitely left anyone else's clothing in a nice pile at their door or wherever they would they would find it. And uh, if the morning if, if the morning bustle wakes me, I'm assuming that no one's really going to want to do anything this early. So I will take the opportunity to get some busy work done in my room. Very good. Mr. Drummond. Well, I wake up fairly early. Mm-hmm. Um, first thing I do is I survey the ruin of my suit and shirt because I did get 
uh, even though I cleaned it a bit at the bar, it's still kind of. Yeah, it's probably something that minus a uh, minus a, a dry cleaning magician, you're going to have a hard time getting things out of. It's not completely beyond use, of course, but uh, maybe if you'd had sense or time to deal with it last night, it wouldn't be so bad. But now in the in the morning light, after several hours of sitting out, it's it's not where you want it to be. No, I so I'll. Uh sigh and throw it in a corner and grab a new suit um, get dressed but I'm not going anywhere yet so no so the question is what are you doing waiting for the phone call all right so our investigators at the hotel are likely going to have some type of breakfast this morning so we'll just say that you awake corral breakfast as you might normally and then move about your day, unless there's anything specific people want to do in preparation for today. I'm doing something specific in my room. When I'm doing my morning uh, devotional, how f- far detached do I feel being this far away? It's definitely something that's different. So it does stand out to you that the further and further east you've traveled away from that secure point you feel a dimness in some of your devotions the the presence is still there but it's almost as if they're behind several layers of some sort of spiritual fabric it's not to say that you don't feel the father you do um but the, his presence in egypt was so thunderous that everything else seems a little muted okay So, Sam, what are you doing in your room? Uh, well, I'm I'm doing science. Uh, I'm going to take some of the, uh, you know, the the whatever the decanter of water that I have available, a couple of the batteries that I have, some of my wire, and the vacuum bottles, and I'm going to fill one of them with hydrogen. All right. And I'm going to close it with a rubber stopper that I can then extract later using one of the syringes I have. To what end, sir? So that I can have an, a, a, a vacuum bottle full of hydrogen if I ever want to use it for something. All right. So I suppose, man, I don't think that's too terribly difficult. I don't think it necessarily requires a roll. No, not even boiling. I just right. put the diodes in and extract some hydrogen. <laughs> very, very well. Anything else? After I cap that off, I will uh, join the group. Okay. The group has breakfast. At this breakfast, are any decisions about the day made? Okay, what do we want to look into first? You certain we have any suitable leads, Jack? Well, we have this. (laughs) For a couple of days so far, you know. Well, it's uh, been so quiet. The two gentlemen that uh, were following us left the name of Madam Swallow. Who is also looking for uh, Mr. Brady. And then the other man mentioned he was working for Ho Fang. Yeah, I don't. Do we go straight to that one? Quite possibly. I mean, we, we have several leads pointing to Ho Fang. Wait, does he have an antique shop? You know, like one I've destroyed before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might. I don't know. So we need to uh, delve into this whole thing. In the business of receiving plenty of goods that he never actually received from Gavigan. Let's not forget that. He's currently in possession, likely, of a bunch of straw-filled boxes. (laughs) Jack, give me an an idea roll. So that's Ed you. Uh, 12 under 72. You have a flash of insight. And you remember back to a room at the Chelsea Hotel and your brain, your detective brain sort of comes forward and you begin scanning objects that were in that room. And one of the objects in that room was a photograph of a boat. And you suddenly remember that the photograph of that boat, that that boat itself, that the background reminds you of some of the the pier building styles here 
This would have been before you even met the Ivory Wind. Yeah. And you need you suddenly need to refer to like the the, the file. The files. I have an idea. I'll be right back. I'll go up to the room and grab the uh, files. It's a it's a pack now. Yeah. So you find a photo in that record, and what you come to notice is some of these larger buildings you think you have seen in the background along the uh, canal, the the canal and seaways here. In fact, this building up close here, down lower, looks definitely like some of the pier buildings that are here in Shanghai. And right. so you get this sort of fervent, like, right, this is here. See this picture? See these buildings? Mm. This is definitely Shanghai. So where did we get this picture from? Jackson Elias had this picture in possession. Mm. We, knew, we knew that he was here, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this person was following us because they thought we knew where Jack Brady was. But do you think that they or Ho Fang know who we are? I don't know. Uh, the only way they uh, got on our tail is when we went to the bar. And we said, we, we mentioned the name Jack Brady. Somebody had left before the whole fight started. The drunk. Yeah. So we have to assume that they do know at least something about us now. Well, they know we're looking for Jack Brady, so I probably put them on our trail. Exactly. I don't think they know who we are yet, but it's only a matter of time. Doctor, you spoke to that drunk, didn't you? He did not wish to be drunk. He he was not, in fact, intoxicated at all. And when I forced him to have a drink, it was when he left. Uh, he was definitely there on some sort of uh, reconnaissance. He was faking it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hands down. Huh. And then he did leave before the, before the fight started, yeah. So it, he could have, um, what is, making the tip off. Yeah. Yeah. Someone to uh, wave the flag and say, yeah, they are inside. But if that was Ho Fang's, was that Ho Fang's people that, w- that we fought against? No. That was the uh, mm. green... The green gang or... Yeah. Well, to be clear, what was found afterwards was that they seemed to be posing as members of the green gang, but Mr. Drummond said that he found markings on their armpits. Mm -hmm. So it's the the cult of the bloated lady. So are there... There's three parties then? There's... Yeah. um, Madam Swallow... There's Ho Fang, and then there's whoever these cultists are. Yes. Bo, I'm guessing Ho Fang and the cultists are connected somehow. Yeah, that's what, what's his name said, right? Um, Cha, Cha, Cha. Yeah, Chum. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Chum. Mick, Mick Chum. Yeah, they they work for him. Or, okay, so what I was saying was yeah. correct. So that means, so maybe then the drunk that left was from Madam Swallow and ran and got that. That gentleman that mm-hmm. was following mm-hmm. us, that Mr. Drummond confronted. So maybe visit Madam Swallow first. Maybe we should check on McChum because it seems like everything goes back there. Oh, the bartender. You know, he seemed pretty capable. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to drag any more attention to uh, him. Well, not necessarily. I mean, to the bar. I mean, if there's got to be, well, he said he would reach out if, if he if he had a reason to, right? Yeah, yeah. We can try Madam Swallow first. You know what? Let's call Drummond and see if he knows anything about either of these two people, and get him over here. You know, um, our new friend, Mister Drummond. His his business card said that he's a photographer. Yes. You know, um, I don't think he was a photographer. He, d- he doesn't seem like he was a photographer first, just by the way he acts. We'll find out. I'm not saying he's not one now. Right, I'm just, right. there, there's, there must be more to him if Ramsey is. Well, you know. 
asking him to babysit you. I'm guessing. Hmm. Anyhow, we'll ca- I'll call uh, Drummond up. Okay. You get the line from, you get a phone yeah. line from the hotel and you call uh, Mr. Drummond. The phone at your domicile rings. Drummond. Hey, Drummond. This is uh, Jack Doyle. Hello. Hi. Uh, would you like to come over to the hotel? Uh, sure. Which hotel? I give him the name of the hotel. Okay. I'll be there. Um, I have to, I have to make a stop real fast before I do. Okay. And, uh, so I should be along about half an hour or so. Okay. All right, Mr. Drummond, where are you headed to? Well, first, first place I'm headed to is telegraph office. All right. And I'm going to compose two telegraphs, one to Carlton Ramsey. Okay. It's going to read friends arrived. They're a bit loud. A lot of neighbors are complaining about the noise. May need help keeping it quiet. And uh, then I will um, send the other telegram. And I will say, um, I'm going to go look for some flowers. I suspect the birds are noisy because their cage is being rattled. Tell mother I said hello. All right. So for, for you on background, there are some things that you would know what this is referencing. Mm-hmm. So a, a reference made specifically to flowers is likely a reference to another agent working for the division here in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. There is one that he refers to as a flower or flowers. There is a person who is and has been a target of not a um, not an aggressive target, but a, a known uh, entity that the division is interested in that they call mother. Mm-hmm. And if the flowers sent to mother have not arrived yet, that likely means that the flowers have been intercepted. Mm-hmm. That is a problem. By the birds. Correct. And I know who the birds are. And so you realize what this means to you is that you need to find a way to secure the flowers or flower to keep it from being spoiled, bad things happening to it. So this sort of changes a little bit of your direction now. Yes, it does. You're being given a rescue mission. Yep. I also will want to make a quick stop over to the uh, offices of the China Independent. So you mean the Shanghai Courier? Whichever whichever paper I'm claiming to be part, uh, part of today. The Shanghai Courier. Okay. So I will head over to the Shanghai Courier. Okay. I will talk with one of the uh, people in the mailroom. And I will make up a story about how um, I, sp- I saw some graffiti in my neighborhood across from my house. And I think there might be a gang trouble brewing, but I don't know what it, how to read this. Mm-hmm. Can you translate it for me? All right. So I think it's a fantastic idea. And what I would like to do is, I think it could be persuade. I guess the question is, is are you looking to have a response, which is, is your expectation that you're going to play dumb, essentially? Yeah. Yeah, because I have a feeling that, you know, if it's tattooed on the armpit of a gangster that uh, most people won't want to talk about whatever it is. All right. So I think depending upon the way you go about it, it could be fast talk or persuade. Can we go with fast talk? We could. Because my story is completely transparent. Especially if you're coming at it from a concerned citizen panicking sort of method. Yep. Sure. Sure. And that is a 55 under 65. Okay. Yeah, the gentleman in the mailroom looks it over and he references um, just a short file on some of the other symbols that they've had. Mm -hmm. And he he doesn't have a record of it. He shakes his head. He said, I've never seen it before. No, no, no. I mean, just what does it say? I can't read. I, I don't read whatever this is. He smirks. Well, it's a, 
how how would you say this in an American? Um, fat lady, uh, a big woman. Hmm. Maybe somebody was just mad at a prostitute. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Perhaps. Well, sorry, I can't be more help. No, no, that's fine. Thank you. And then I will head to the hotel. So at the hotel, uh, after breakfast and after some uh, up time enough for all of you to clean up and prepare for the day, a uh, one Robert Drummond arrives. Mr. Drummond, sit down. I take off my hat. I sit down. Uh, so after last night, we uh, picked up a couple of leads we want to ask you about. Okay. Uh, oh, this whole thing. Uh, he's an import export person. Um, he deals a lot in in um, antiquities. You know anything else about him? Uh, he's well connected. Mm-hmm. He's very well connected. I'm not sure why he. I I wouldn't know who is this Jack Brady. That is a very long story. Let's just say he's a a survivor of an event, and we need to know what he's seen. I, I have a thought on that, Jack. Well, so in, in a previous life, I would have found a reason to skulk off and find someone to spy on or a place to stake out. But in an effort to afford myself an opportunity to operate as an investigator rather than a saboteur, I think we should take a hard right off of this. These are these are power players that are looking for us and for Brady. I don't know that we should wait for him to come around just to get cornered by them. I think we should try to find him ourselves. Yeah, I have every intention of continuing looking for him. Right, but if this guy has uh, created enough messes for this many people, we're not going to find him with the people looking for him. We're going to find him elsewhere, right? Yeah. Yes. That's what we'll be doing here. We just got somewhere to start. Normally you all check the paper, you go to museums, you look for clues, right? We know what Jack Brady's been doing. Then we can get information about where he might be. Well, um, the bartender said something about him doing some work for people involving explosives. That could be a number of concerned organizations. Yeah, I think he... uh... I remember back exactly what he said he was working for. A group of concerned citizens or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like union. I think it was talking about unions. Maybe. It's hard to say exactly, but uh kind of sounds like he's arming uh, revolutionaries. Well, I, I think it's just more along the lines of no good import-export man wants to see a union among the workers on the docks. Yeah, that would be, for you, Drummond, that, that is probably part of what's going on, is that Ho Fang is a, is a merchant and a, and a wealthy one. He's not interested in playing with unions at all. So uh, we know that Ho Fang is also connected to some of the events so I think he's probably looking for Jack Brady for the same reason we are, or something very close to it. I bet we could easily find a disgruntled worker for him that would be willing to talk. <laughs> maybe not know much, but maybe enough for us to, you know, find something. Who, Ho, somebody who works for Ho Fang? Mm-hmm. Somebody, a disgruntled dock worker. If they're trying to form a union, then... My father in Bavaria, he was also a merchant. Uh, those men, they will not, uh, what do you say? They will not turn over on Ho Fang. They fear they will lose their lives, their jobs. If Ho Fang has money and power, then he has the same thing that all men with money and power have. Well, then why would they try and form a union? A union of men is strong. One man who tells the truth about things, they find him floating in the harbor. Well, regardless, uh, this, this whole thing is connected to the cult of the bloated lady. Mom? Yeah. That's what we were told last night, this cult of the bloated lady. 
Order of the Bloated Woman. Yeah, yeah. Cult of the Bloated Woman. So, um, remember I said that there were tattoos on the guys in the bar? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The tattoo says Bloated Woman. That makes sense. So you think this whole thing is uh, in with the cult? Oh, yes. If he's not the leader of the cult, he's uh, highly placed. He was getting uh, items shipped to him from another cult leader across uh, in England. No wonder Carlton. uh, (laughs) I just shake my head. Do you know a Madam Swallow? Well, that's... um, that's a Madam Lynn. She is another exporter. Um, she's not exactly friendly with Ho Fang. Not that you're aware of, no. They're, they would almost be not rivals, but in the same similar lines of work. Yeah. If they're both looking for Jack Brady, then he must have something that is important to both of them and probably in in relation to their business. I bet you it's something from the place we just left. Yeah, very likely. Which tells me that uh, Madam Swallow also in the same line of work. Mm-hmm. But she's a little smaller, so it it's uh, probably a bit easier to uh, work with her She's a little bit less connected. And if anything is going to get Ho Fang's attention, it would be people that he has his eye on talking to one of his competitors. Also, we're going to have to look for that. I think we're going to have to look for that ship in the picture. Didn't we get part part of a name on it? Yeah. Well, I pull a file out and show you the picture. So I'll give you this much, Mr. Drummond. You know where that is. Okay. One other question. Can I look, can I, by looking at the photograph, tell what kind of camera took it? Uh, yes, you can. What do I know about the uh, camera that took it? It is relatively, technologically speaking, newer. Probably, it's probably in the past five to 10 years. Okay. It's a pretty good picture, actually. Hmm. And you also know that just by looking at it, that the person who take who took that picture was trying to take a clean picture of that specific ship in the middle. That's what they're aiming at. This wasn't a random, uh, you know, landscape picture. They were trying to take a picture of that of that specific ship. I look at the partial name on the side. It's D E R. Yeah. Uh, D A R D E R. It's a yacht, whatever it is. So there's a certain class of people in Shanghai that would have a yacht like that. Yep. And there would be a registry. There would. You're looking for this boat. Yes. Well, in order to do that, you're going to need to go to the dock master and see if you can find it on the registry. You know the first three letters of the name. If they haven't changed the name, then it should be fairly easy to track down, especially since the name's in English. A great idea. I think I could accomplish that, Jack. It doesn't sound too dangerous. You want to handle that? Sure. And I think it would be a terrible idea for all of us to go speak to Madam Swallow or Ho Fang as a group. We are a lot more obtrusive. I don't even know if we're going to be able to speak to any of them. Hmm. But I can handle that. Yeah. Hey, Drummond. Yes. Do they print the paper here in English? They print them in several languages. There's a French paper. There's a few English papers. There's also Chinese editions. I just mean like the whatever the... What papers are like... Are there people reading the paper in the, the hotel? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What's the name of it? The name of one of the papers here that prints in English is the Shanghai Courier. Is there are there any laying around? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll just grab one off an empty table if no one's reading it. You get an array of stories, some in English, obviously some in the uh, in Cantonese. Does it say where the uh, like the printing office is, like where you would send letters and stuff? Yep. 
where's this place? I'll, I'll point to it and like talking to Drummond. Where's, where's this place? I'll go, oh, I know where that is. It's, and I'll point out that it's not that far away. Not at all. 15, 20 minutes. The doctor's going to go to the dock. Dock? Dock, right? Yep. Yeah. Does anyone want to go see if we can get a look at these papers? Yeah, we could. Um, Mr. Drummond, what, 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 what paper does he work for again? Yeah, China Independent. Well, Mr. Drummond, couldn't you get us into the China Independent? I'm sure I could. I think that would be a better place to go, don't you? We could always go to the Independent, but the courier's closer, and it. I don't. There won't be a problem getting into the courier. Well, yeah, you're the expert. There's if if we don't find anything at one, we can always check the other, right? This is true. I can also read Cantonese. Well, yeah, that might help. So, Doctor, you're going to go to the the harbor master, the dock area. Yep. The dock stands up, puts his hat on, grabs his cane. All right. Are you taking any with you? Just going solo? I think I'm going to go about town myself. This sounds like fun. I will catch up with you. <laughs> you walk out the door past Lily and looking up, looking like she's going to say something. <laughs> hmm? uh, I run after the doctor and go with him. Splitting the party. It works all the time. It Split it any number of ways you like. I do have a weapon with me, of course. I like visibly shiver after Lily leaves. <laughs> So the rest of you are going to head to the Shanghai Courier? Yes. Actually, okay. Sam's going to get up kind of panicked as uh, the Dr. Lillian leave and catch her at the door. Lillian? Look, I mean, I, I get you, like you have to leave with the doctor. I just, things got hairy last night. And I mean, they were, I was able to, you know, no one died again. But what, what should I, what should I do? You know, it, it would probably be good for you to go with Jack and and Drummond. The, the more muscle, the merrier. And Maeve. Who should I defer to then? For? If, in case something comes up that I really don't. If you have questions about decisions, talk to Jack. He, he, he might seem all hardened and everything, but he's a good person. I found this uh, last night here. I will I'll pass her a knife. He gives you a knife? No, I have two. This is a little different of a knife. Yeah, it's not like the, the other one that was like a scythe. No, no, this is something a little different. You're not used to this. This knife has um, a sort of a, a, a strange curve and then there's a backwards like tip on it. So if you were to oh. stab someone with it, you could rip down it looks rather violent oh yes I figured it come in handy good, good luck you just put in your other boot oh, I'll walk away Sam I spent quite a bit of time traveling by myself before I came to this group I can handle myself sometimes I'm not worried about you you worry about the doctor oh I'm worried about the doctor I'm just worried about having to you figure something out yes I I think you're in a good place. You've come a long way. I'm, I'm carrying a bomb. Well. A little one. We all have demons we have to battle. So the group heads to the Shanghai Courier. In where, upon their arrival, they are introduced by the man working the desk to the editor of the Courier. His name is uh, Anthony. So you meet... Anthony Chang, who is a, it looks like Anthony might be maybe his father's Asian, maybe his mother's American. He speaks with a very well manicured uh, American, like English. He's very open uh, and easy to deal with. So like when he approaches you, he gives you a American handshake. That's something that you've not yet seen here. And he says, uh, Uh, Anthony Chang. Jack Doyle. Nice to meet you, Mr. Doyle. How are you? I'm doing very well. These are my associates, uh, Miss Maeve O'Shea, Hmm. Mr. Sam Barone, and Mr. Robert Drummond. 
Well, uh, fantastic. Uh, so uh, what can the courier do for you? Uh, we're looking for into some events. Hmm. You might, you might need to be more specific, but yes. Well, one thing we do is looking for unusual uh, events that may have taken place in the city in the last few months. You might say unfortunate incidents. Well, uh, you are. Uh, I'm certainly a city like Shanghai would have <laughs> its own share of uh, incidents yeah, and strange yeah, right, things that might right. have happened. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. The uh, the couriers' uh, archives, uh, are dating back just to till yesterday, and then several years beyond her more than open for anyone who'd like to pass their fingers through those pages. That would be fantastic. If there's anything specific, uh, I have lived here for uh, many years and carried many of the stories here. No, it's uh, it's more of what uh, we have a trained eye for certain details. Hmm. So, uh, may I ask you about... Uh, you probably don't know. Uh, order of a uh, bloated woman. The blooded woman. Mm, I mean, I would. I guess what it, in, in reference to what? Uh, apparently, it was a, a an old religious cult. Oh, uh, well, Shanghai has more than a few uh, old <laughs> religious cults. You understand? But likely, it's a resurrected name used by some local gang. I'm sure. Of course, of course. No, oh, that's. Thank you for uh, at least answering that question so oh, anyhow could yeah if we could uh go through the uh yes 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 right away he turns around and shows you to the records room this will have uh, every paper from uh current date till well uh easily accessible anyway for the past five or six years okay thank you very much okay um if the investigators are going to make use of the room they would make a library use rule uh, first thing I'm going to ask is, what exactly are you looking for? Again, it's something that we would know. Usually, I uh, um, <laughs> think they get covered by, uh, blamed on monster attacks or wild animals. Oh. Large numbers of missing people. Library use is not my forte, but once they kind of dive in in this, a- Anthony is his name, this Anthony fellow. Yeah. drifts a bit I would like to approach him and without saying much I would like to God, this guy just seems so willing I'm going to spend a point of sanity okay um, and I'm going to insert myself into his life okay you're going to take on the appearance of a family member or someone in his life okay so I will say as Anthony he turns to you just for a moment and he says David you, no, nobody else hears this, obviously, because you're all dive deep into the records. David, how did you get here? It's a long story. Look, uh, uh, there's just some, there's a lot of important stuff going on that I really could use your help getting to the to the root of. Can we, can we talk in private? Of course, of course, of course. He takes you into his office. I haven't seen you since Oxford. Uh, so there's lots happened since then. What's, uh, since I haven't really been around, what's been happening in... Uh, What's been happening here? The day-to-day of a, of a work of a paper goes on and on, yes? Stories and, well, to be honest, there's been an awful lot of unrest in the city. Please, man, out with it. The, the political situation here in China is getting more and more unstable by the day. And the city is beginning to... You know how the political rest was in England with, with workers and the strikes and the miners and that sort of thing? Very aware. The same thing is happening here. The people are rising up and they're getting very frustrated. There are private militias that are popping up all over the place now. And these criminal gangs, so many of them are are rife throughout our city now. And just yesterday, just yesterday, my neighbor was attacked by them, uh, just a, a group of men that wanted protection money for her restaurant. That's dreadful. Uh, are, they, are they okay? For now, yes. They've gone to the police, but it's... You might as well take a number and wait for them to call at some point or write you a letter telling you that they have 
no leads or no information on the people who've wronged you. What, what was which restaurant was it? He gives you the name of the restaurant. It's a flower girl shop nearby. You, you know, he sort of makes a strange facial gesture. I'm familiar. Yes, that uh, that sounds uh, that, that does ring a bell. Okay, well, with all of these gangs and organizations, what about um, more nefarious people? Nefarious? Like who? Oh, well, I've heard rumors that people like certain uh, import-export magnates have taken a, an interest in expanding their influence. Perhaps Ho Fang? A very, very influential man. Very. And powerful, too. He's been taking over several new piers near his warehouse. His warehouse near near the docks? Yes. It's not far from here, really. He keeps it uh, in a centralized place, packed with people, always working in and out. And what about his, uh, his rival, the Swallow? Hmm? He looks a little quizzical. Madame, Madame Lin? Oh, Speaking of flower girl houses, uh, she she keeps a hold of many um, nests, if you understand my meaning. Oh, she, she runs them. The flower girl houses. Oh, strings of them, yes. She's no fool. And uh, I cannot help but think that she always seems to know what is exactly going on. It's as if she has eyes and ears everywhere. Well, no one truly can see everything, right? No, of course not, but... I did read something recently in, um, you'll for, forgive me, of course, in another journal that mentioned that um, she has a more than passing interest in antiquities and occult pieces. From anywhere in particular? Oh, all over. Uh, she's been doing a lot of collecting in the northern part of the country. But there's mm. also some things that have come her way from Mexico as well and South America. That's intriguing. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know that her interests uh, expanded that far, reaching. We get travelers here from all over, not just England like yourself, but there's there are many travelers. I don't suppose. Uh, speaking of travelers, um, there's been a lot of murmuring about a fellow named Brady. Brady, Jack Brady, an American, I believe. Hmm. I know many of the Americans that have settled here. And uh, other uh, like types, but I've never heard of Jack Brady. Perhaps um, an associate of his then, a uh, a Jackson Elias, a writer. He seems to pause for a second and you watch his eyes glaze over. Just a moment. No. I've never heard of him. What do I feel like just happened? Hard psychology. I mean, I would have to spend, what, 15 luck to yep. make that a thing. You know what? You How much do I need to live? Is it 30? 30. 30, yeah. I, yeah, I have to. This is, this is, it's, it's Jackson. I'm going to yep. spend 15 luck. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, gonna make it a hard psychology success. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you make it a hard psychology success in your work. With the Book of the Bone, you remember a passage where the wizard talked about where he interacted with the men and were able to quell their nature and their spirit just slightly. I have that spell. You do. You also remember him telling you a tale of his ability to tell people what to do. Um, Although the spell is never detailed. And he remarked in one that when he gave a person an order, he could give it to them in a fashion to where it would not actually happen until a certain segment of words or phrases specifically were uttered. Someone told him then to not talk about Jackson Elias, is what I think. That does appear. That's that's what you appear to believe. I will... As his friend, I will say, are, "Are you okay? Let me, babe. Why don't you stay right here? I'll, I'll, I'll fetch you some. I'll fetch you some tea." Oh, th- thank you. Of course. You see him shake his head a few times. Uh, so, 
to the to the group who is um, working the room. Your library use rolls? 24 out of 97. Okay. 24 out of 97 is an awfully good roll. Jack? Uh, I also got a 24, but it mines out of 75. Mr. Drummond? You won't believe it. 24 out of 70. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hang on. What's going on here? <laughs> hand this to, to uh, Lonnie, if you would. And hand this down to... Jack and Mr. Shea. So what I'm handing out to the cast here are props from the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society prop box that the uh, mask crew uses. So I would like to again tip my hat to H.P. Uh, Lovecraft Historical Society and their amazing prop box. And all of the wonderful newsprint y'all get to read. So, Mr. Drummond, you're fairly certain you know what that news report Oh, refers. I know exactly what that news report refers to. Yes. So this is like old home week here. <laughs> it is, in fact, old home week as, well, <sighs> an incident occurred at some point. Yeah. I suddenly have an inspiration. Do you? I do. Okay. Care to share? You know, we have two import-export specialists who are both looking for the same person. I happen to know a third one who might owe me a favor. Import-export person that might owe you a favor? Yeah, maybe. If okay. I get to see him, I think Victor Sassoon might be a person of interest. He might indeed. That would be dependent upon whether or not you're willing to leverage or attempt to leverage someone like Sir Victor Sassoon. It's not leverage. It's it's merely, um, well, okay, let me put it this way. He's in the same business they are. That's true. If this Jack Brady has something that both um, Ho Fang and Madame Lin want, then perhaps he'll want it too. Quite possible. So, uh, Mr. Doyle, you have uncovered a story there. Yes. So apparently uh, three monks have been found dead. They were experts in... Uh, expert scholars in Tang, Five Dynasties, and Sung literature. But here's the interesting part. Eyewitnesses remarked that the evening fire leapt in an uncanny fashion from one blazing structure to chase the fleeing monks into a second pavilion. A floating cloud of fire followed them. Sounds familiar. And I forgot to actually tell people what the story was. Yeah, please go right ahead. So a portion of the Siemens Club was destroyed late last night. There was considerable damage to the riverside of it. No injury or loss of life is reported, but revelers from nearby taverns who were congregating along the riverbank at the time of the incident swear that quote-unquote strange creatures emerged from the water shortly before the building came down. I told you we'd know it when we saw it. And so Shay's reading the funny papers over there. I am, but there is one story of a giant bat killing somebody at 88 Lantern Street. A giant bat, you say? Yeah, two people, actually. A Miss Wong and a Mr. Chin. Oh, well. But we were at 10 Lantern Street the other night. Indeed you were. Oh, uh, one more thing about this event. A European man was seen fleeing from the uh, vicinity. So I'm going to leave the, the group of you there for a moment. And we're going to uh, move over to Dr. Tottenbach and Miss Lane as they approach... The large harbor and dock house that sits here on the bun, this sort of enormous control office. And there are uh, many people coming in and out. There are seagulls uh, and all sorts of um, seamen mm. coming in and off boats. As the, uh, as you make your way up the uh, the stairway into the, the more formal structure of the building. Uh, head up, take my hat off as I get inside and uh, look for probably an administration desk. Some sort of secretarial area. Yeah, you find one. Okay. Uh, look over and wait patiently in front of the desk. You wait patiently in front of the desk after they get done serving a couple of people who are in front of you. Uh, there's a uh, a young man there who stubs out a, a cigarette into a ashtray that probably needed to be dumped about five hours ago. And he uh, turns towards you and 
and asks first in Cantonese and then eventually in in English. <laughs> I nod when he starts speaking in English. He stops. Uh, Help you? Uh, y- y- yes, I would like to. Um, I'm trying to find a specific ship. Is it possible? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Do you have the name? Well, I have Summer's name. I have a um, photo. He gets a curious look on his face and he st- stretches out his fingers. Hmm. He looks at it kind of quizzically. He nods in some sort of a strange approval. Nice picture. Nah. A friend of mine took it. He's quite a photographer. I think I've seen this ship before. It's nice. It's quite nice. I calmly reach into my pocket, pull out a few pounds sterling. Hmm. Just fold it in my hand and put it on the counter so just the corner of the, so just the corner of the money is sticking out. <laughs> so I'm going to call for a group luck roll between Mister uh, for for Dot and Dr. Tomback and Miss Lane, whomever has the lowest luck. Yeah, I got like a four. That's a sixty-two over four. so the hand of fate is going to make it a success yes thank you lovely hand of fate you're just burning through all those oh yeah well it's just the good ones (laughs) yep oh we get this the negative hands of fate now the slaps of fate if you will (laughs) (laughs) he smacks the picture against his book and says and puts a, a stubby finger on it and says this ship is in the harbor now. It it is. Oh, um, where where's about? Do you know? He flips through his logbook, and he says, "Yep, see here, yeah." And you can't read it because obviously it's in Cantonese. Mm, yeah. Uh, dark mistress. Dark mistress. Ah, that is wonderful. Thank you so much. I reach out to shake his hand. He shakes your hand. Okay. Leaves the the the. St- Pound sterling in his hand as I walk away. <laughs> he takes it. Yep. Offer my elbow to Miss Lane. Hmm? I have an urge to walk down by the docks. I think that's a wonderful idea. And I take his elbow. You walk the docks. It takes you a little while to find the proper pathing for it, but you got pointed out in sort of the dock number that it was at. So out beyond the pier itself, you see a ship, which isn't actually docked properly against the pier because it's not on, it's not on taking or offloading anything. But out there in the water, you see this black sailed yacht. It's there. One from the photograph. All right. So we can't get to it. You cannot get to it right now, but it is physically there. You know, doctor, we, we probably should have asked who owns the ship. That's probably documented. Uh, perhaps, but um, we could. Dock worker nearby? No, yeah. Uh, um, mm-hmm. He stops. Do you speak English? Please. English? He mm. shakes his head no. Mm. <laughs> I kind of does a question mark, quizzical look. Uh, he points at the harbor house. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should go back and ask the... Uh, all right, we'll head back to the harbor house and <laughs> then we'll head probably back to the hotel afterwards yes. by way of maybe a bookstore. We're in Shanghai. There's bound to be some amazing shopping here. Yeah, one would think so, right? I agree. Uh, so you go back to the harbor house. Mm-hmm. You walk back in. You s- mm-hmm. speak to the same man yep. who mm-hmm. looks a little quizzical. I I forgot. Totally escaped my mind. Who owns the dark mistress, if I may be so bold? He sort of scratches his head. Ho Feng? No. He stands up and goes over to what looked like a, a, a wall full of small little boxes. It's a it's a it's a mail post, right? So there's like fifty of them. And he starts sort of fishing through some of them. And he comes back and empty handed. And he says, uh, what's it with to you? 
Doc puts his hand into his coat pocket, not in a threatening, like, inside coat pocket, but more like a wallet pocket. Mm -hmm. It it is actually a very, um, very important question to me and my friend here. Good. Doc accidentally knocks uh, a pen on the floor and palms like a a ten note. (laughs) How much money you got on you, doctor? I'm almost out. I got like, I had like 30 pounds sterling when we left, uh, <laughs> when, when we left Egypt. So I am like running a little, a little dry bones here, but this is, seems to be fairly important. So I'm going to have you roll persuade for me. All righty. Uh, that is a 24 over 10%. So. Um, he takes the money, puts it in his pocket, and he says, uh, it's a little bit more expensive than that, you understand. I pull out some money of my own, and I pull out another 10, and I it's my turn to try to persuade him. Sure, go ahead. How would you like to persuade him? So as I like lean over the desk and bat him with my big blue eyes <laughs> listen I, I, I'm i trying to buy that yacht from whoever owns that for a very important person back in the United States as I slide I slide the uh, the note under like a file folder or some some paper that he has <laughs> okay surreptitious bribery of, of harbor yep. masters and then I am going to roll persuade I get a 63 out of 81. He takes your money. He pockets it. And he says, the last uh, thing I remember ever going to that vessel for mail was for a Alfred Penhurst. I believe he is the owner. One Alfred Penhurst? Alfred Penhurst. Thank you very much. You have been Thank you. most kind. He smiles, knowing well that he's made like a month's wages. <laughs> or more, yeah. Right. Okay, so back to the Shanghai Courier. Sam, you have gotten, you left the office to fetch tea. Uh, where are you going? I'm I'm looking for Jack. Okay, you find Jack and Maeve and Drummond in the, in the records room. And they seem to have found a couple of disparate stories that they're going over. I come back looking relatively... Sp- Relatively spooked. Are you okay, Sam? Oh, yeah. I'm a little worried about the editor. So, long story short, I was I was able. I, I I asked him a few questions. He was happy to answer. I asked him about a mutual friend. I asked him about um, I asked him about Jackson, and he reacted as if someone had done something to him. Like he was, like he wanted to remember, but he couldn't bring himself to. Was some kind of magical interference? Yes, like someone placed. As, it's pretty familiar. I mean, it sounds similar to something I read about in you know, during the research, but this is different. This is this was some sort of um, almost like a trigger that that set him unable to, t- to talk about him. Miss O'Shea, do you think there's anything you could do about that? Probably not, but well, maybe I don't know. But mm, I don't think so. But that means he was definitely here, right? Well, somebody was here that didn't want anyone talking about what he was up to. Which means that the editor knew something. Yeah, I mean, he was happy to volunteer a bunch of other information about um, all the other stuff going on here, which I'm happy to talk about after we leave. Did you all find a bunch of stuff? Uh, we found uh, some interesting articles. Um, Miss O'Shea, do you remember me telling you about uh, figures on the back of the whale on the ship? I don't... I think I was busy. I don't well, remember just, us seeing whales. She was studying or sleeping. Well, uh, I saw a whale and I could have swore I saw figures in the back. Actually, mm-hmm. I saw it twice. Mm-hmm. And the story about the Siemens Club damaged mentions uh strange creatures emerging from the water like merfolk 
I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm like acting like it's ridiculous at this point. <laughs> uh, That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Well, the monk fire either sounds like fire em- elemental, um, which we have actually that spell. I like how we're having this conversation right in front of uh, Drummond. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's great too. I'm just looking back and forth between them. That uh, like a fire vamp vampire whatever. or that one burn oh, down that that's uh, different yeah. shop in Cairo but the f- way that it was described is it was like s- smoke moving or whatever yeah, like a cloud of fire yeah that sounds more like an elemental M- Mr. Drummond they begin talking about occult matters yeah I I, I was um, thinking about what um, Mr. Baron said and that sounds like suggestion to me. It certainly does. Do I know anything about suggestion? You might know a little bit about it. Let me roll some occult if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. No, I have that too. Uh, I got an 05 out of 45. Ooh. The dice have been good today. Uh, hot dice. Uh, yeah, Miss O'Shea, obviously, if you'd like to take a roll on sort of a what what would cause the type of effect that Sam's talking about. Mine wasn't nearly as good. It's an 83 out of 83. Oh, well, it's a success. You can always tick the box, right? Hopefully you're all ticking these wonderful Mm. skill boxes as you use them. No, I've been forgetting, but it's all right. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Oh. Uh, So I'll say, given your role, um, Mr. Drummond, you are aware of the potential uh, hypnotic procedure or uh, some type of hypnosis that could be utilized through certain types of incantations to make someone not remember something, to work off of like a sort of trigger word. Is there a way to undo it? Not that you're aware of. Do you know who might be able to? The doctor. The doctor might be able to. That's possible, but then we have to get him in front of the doctor. Well, I mean, he's, he's happy to talk to us. Are the articles out and about, or are they like where? I mean, I yeah. would assume so. Yeah, the articles are out and about. Out and about. Okay. I wanted to um, look for specifically anything about Jackson Elias. If there's any papers, I know this is a records room, Mm -hmm. but I mean, if you're going to stash like pieces of paper or notes or anything. So I'll tell you this much. Um, You have a fantastic library use role already in this room. If there was something Elias had left here, you'd have found it. Okay. It looks like you've got, I mean, you all turned up tons of stuff and um, I just really, I feel kind of, um, I look at Drummond. Uh, look, I, I know that you're, you're, you're one of Ramsey's guys, but I just need a quick second with my friends, if that's okay. Do you mind? I uh, look for a second, and then I make a brief gesture with my arm, and then I go off to the side. Look, uh, Jack, Maeve, after we read the book or the surgery or something, something happened to me. And when I got better, I started finding myself able to get to know people unusually intimately quickly they, they see me as someone to them someone they care about it just kind of happens the editor thinks I'm his friend Daniel I just feel kind of awful uh, that's how we got through that's how I got through the line at the, 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 the customs as well I didn't really know what was going on but I, I thought you should know we might be able to use that talent in the future obviously we've used it a couple times already it's okay I'll I'll, I got through custom because I cast a spell (laughs) is is Drummond over there can he see us (laughs) I mean I I would imagine he can see you oh I can totally see you oh uh actually Sam this is perfect then you were in his office right Mm mm-hmm I want to be able to find, see if he has anything on like a piece of paper, a note, anything in his office from Elias. I'm, I'm guessing that whoever, uh, 
put that block on him. Probably searched his office pretty well. Maybe. You never know where people hide stuff. You never know where, what, what seems innocent to one is actually code for another. You could be right. Could be written in another language that they don't know. Well, the easiest thing to do though is get him out of the office and let you in there, right? Yep. But since you already have an in with him, that might help. Well, I don't. I don't know how long it lasts. Yeah. Well, we can find out, right? Uh, sure. I'll go back to his office and tap on the door. Okay. Yeah. Oh, with tea. I have my tea. He opens the door, and you see him, and he doesn't seem as affable to see you this time. Mm-hmm. He doesn't seem upset. He just doesn't. He doesn't seem to remember you as David. Okay. No. Uh. Say th- thank you. You didn't have to do that. Oh, well, you've been so so helpful to us. Um, do you do you remember me? Remember my name? He looks at you a little quizzically. You you came in with that group of Americans. Yes, Sam. Yes. Oh, nice to meet you, Sam. I'm Anthony. Um, Anthony, if you could, uh, there was something in the archives I was really having a lot of trouble figuring out. I mean, the the, the sorting here is a little odd. Do you mind giving me a hand? Oh no 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 not at all. He sort of springs to action and steps into the archives room like he sets the tea down on his desk and heads in. Um, I will, you know, side-eye Maeve as I shuffle off with the, with the editor. I'll, uh... Just snoop? Yeah. Leave and go into his office. Yeah, <laughs> Snoop. So make a stealth roll. Oh, that's not good. My not ass to... is gonna get in the way. Well, I mean, it might. To be fair, I'm trying to be very distracting. What you got there, Miss O'Shea? A 78 out of 20. Ooh. <laughs> 78 out of 20. Yeah, so uh, true to form, uh, you step into his office, and when you do, uh, your rather developed backside uh, does essentially tap against his door, and when it does, it hits the wall, and you see that somebody at one of the sorting desks looks up and is sort of looks a little quizzical. You can keep going, obviously, if you want. Well, I'll just uh, act like I'm just, like, looking to see if he's in here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I guess, maybe wait outside his door or in the doorway until that person, like, like I'm waiting for him to return. Sure. They eventually go back to doing the work they're they're doing. Okay. Then I'll... (laughs) (laughs) Then I'm going to head inside. Yep. Okay. You head inside. Uh, So give me a spot hidden roll to search his desk or office area. That is not a success. It's an 89 out of 75. Up to you. You could push the roll if you wanted. You just have to tell me how you're pushing. In for a penny. Let's go. Yeah, I guess then I'm going to basically feel for like false bottoms on the tops of the, you know tops of the drawers like so okay you take a, you take a <sighs> second stab not gonna go well i can tell already these dice hate me tonight oh that's a 37 okay so 37 on the roll you go through his desk you go through his drawers and you find a a letter okay. in his drawer and it isn't From Jackson Elias. Okay. The letter in his drawer is written in Cantonese, which doesn't bother you at all. Mm Mm-hmm. Given the fact that you are fluent in reading it now and basically any other human language. When you do, though, you begin to unravel a bit of political intrigue. The letter that is addressed to Anthony details a group called New China and their desire to change the current, we'll just say political structure of what's going on in China. And they ask Anthony for his help in spreading a message. A message to the people of China. One that is already bubbling in the streets. So 
you can tell by the way this letter was hidden in his desk that this would be very dangerous if it got out. Okay. Well, I will place it back. Okay. Does it? It doesn't have any contacts or anything on it? It does list, um, should he choose to speak with the voice of the of new china it does mention a man named chu min but that's all i find that is all you find no trace of jackson elias here at this point physical trace anyway right okay um so you come out of his office he works with you sam on whatever it is that you need to locate it's easy enough for you to drum up Essentially, a simple subterfuge to keep the act going. Sure. Yeah, the only thing I, I would genuinely ask him, you know, I'll thank him for being so helpful and, and volunteering all this information and ask him if if he if he could recommend, is there anyone else that he would recommend that we talk to that is as forthwith as he is, that is as interested in these things? Oh, yeah, you should you should absolutely go to the Shanghai Museum. I mean, if you're interested in culture, if you're interested in some of the things here, and what is happening in China in from what your he you sort of look glances around the room. From what your friends um, tastes seem to be, the curious, the strange, the museum is full of all sorts of things that have happened over China and happened in China over the past thousands of years. It's a very ancient place. Well, um, I again I appreciate I appreciate your honesty and considering um Considering how trying times are now, to know that uh, to know that you, you're willing to to welcome foreigners into your place is pleasant. Thank you. Oh, of course. Well, I mean, truth be told, um, I'm not from here either, as you can probably tell. I only came by this way, uh, well, several years ago, after Oxford. Of course. Yes, I, I I would recommend um, Mr. Mao in uh, at the Shanghai Museum. Speak with him, and he might be able to enlighten you further. Be sure to let him know that you sent uh, sent us his way. Of course, I will offer to shake his hand. He shakes your hand. He has a he has a reasonable grip. There's nothing special there, it seems, but he seems forthwith and genuine, which is. A lot harder to find these days. So, on that note, we're going to call this episode to a close. And next week, we'll pick up with something special. Thank you, and good night.